In this Blender tutorial, we are going to mechanically rig this door using rotation constraints and a couple other tricks. The end result is this door's rotation will be locked so it only opens and closes the way it's supposed to, even if we change the pivot point settings later. My name is Brandon, let's go. Step one is permanently locking the pivot point using a pivot constraint. The first thing we need to do is make sure this door's pivot point is always where it's supposed to be. Initially, we might place the origin point on the edge of the door and set the pivot for the scene to individual origins. That would work until we change that setting. Then the door's rotation would get all messed up. We can fix this door's pivot point to another object. In this case, I have placed a separate hinge object that I will use. I made sure the hinge's origin point is in the center of its geometry. If we didn't want to do that, we could also press Shift A and add an empty object in the place that we'll want the object's pivot point to be. Later, we will want to parent these objects to the door frame or to each other so that they all stay together. Next, we're going to select the door and add a pivot constraint. Go to the Properties panel down here. This is the Constraint Properties tab. We currently have no constraints on this door. Click Add Object Constraint and choose Pivot. The pivot constraint will let us use a target object as our pivot point. Click this box and choose the object that will be our pivot point. I'll choose the top hinge, or we can use the eyedropper to click the object we want. Then we'll want to change this rotation range setting from its default to be always. Now if I select the door and press R to rotate, we see the door always rotates around the target object. It will do this no matter what our pivot point setting is for the overall scene. Step two is locking our axis rotations. Of course, we only want this door to rotate along the Z axis, which runs up and down. To do that, we will lock the rotation of the door on the X and Y axes. Select the door and press N to open the sidebar menu. And in the item tab, the door's rotation settings are shown here. Press the lock icon next to the X and Y axes. This locks them. Now, no matter what we do, this door is not allowed to rotate along those axes, and we can only rotate along the Z axis. That is, of course, unless we come back later and unlock them. But the next issue we are going to fix is that a real door won't spin 360 degrees like this. If you haven't already, hitting that like button would mean the world to me. It really, really helps. Thank you so much. Step three is to limit the door's rotation. We don't want to lock the door's rotation on the Z axis like we did the X and Y, but we do want to limit it to a certain range. Let's go back to the Constraints Properties tab, and we're going to add a second constraint to this door. Choose Add Object Constraint, and this time choose Limit Rotation. With this constraint, we can limit how much an object can rotate along each axis. We don't need to worry about the X and Y axis settings because those are already locked. But let's check the box next to the Z axis. We're going to enter minimum and maximum angle values for how much the door can rotate on the axis. In the item tab on the sidebar, I see that when the door is closed, its rotation is all zeros. Also, as I rotate the door in the direction I want it to open, I see the rotation values are increasing or moving in the positive direction. So I know I want to limit the rotation to zero as a minimum and some larger angle as a maximum. I happen to know I will want the door to only rotate 120 degrees. You may want to allow it to rotate more or less depending on what you're doing. If the door's hinge was on the opposite side or we wanted the door to open the other direction, we would make zero the maximum value and put a minimum value of 120 degrees instead. Just depends on whether you're rotating clockwise or counterclockwise. But in this case, zero is the minimum and I want the maximum to be 120 degrees. So let's type those into the limit rotation constraint for the Z axis. This should work, but as we have it right now, it won't. If we rotate the door, it kind of works, but it moves around and that's not right. This is a byproduct of the order in which these constraints are placed. And all we have to do to fix it is grab this little icon on the limit rotation constraint and drag it above the pivot constraint. Just like with modifiers, the order of the constraints is important. Now let's see how it works. Select the door, press R to rotate, and look, the door will only rotate in the proper direction and will stop at its maximum rotation angle. I think that's pretty cool. Okay, I don't know how many of you caught this, but we actually could have skipped the second step. That's where we locked the rotation in the sidebar for the X and Y axes. We could have also accomplished this by checking the X and Y values on the limit rotation and just leaving the minimum and maximum values at zero. Both methods accomplish the same thing, but I wanted to show you both. So that's how we mechanically rig this door with constraints. This method could be used for a lot of other things, like restricting the movement of robotic arms or legs. In a future video, I plan to show you how to make this little open and close switch, which will control the door being, well, open and closed. That's something we're able to do in Blender with a feature called drivers. Oh, and also I'm gonna make this project file with the toggle button available to my Patreon subscribers.
subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Or if you're watching in the future, look for that video link below. Please don't forget to hit that like button. Thank you and stay creative.